Welcome back everyone. In this lecture we're going to be discussing strings. Strings are sequences of characters using the syntax of either single quotes or double quotes. Here we can see three examples. First we have hello with single quotes, then hello with double quotes, and then what's nice about having both options of single quotes or double quotes, it means that if you have a single quote in your string that you want to keep and not have that end your actual string, you can wrap it in the other type of quote, such as double quotes or vice versa. So here we can see, I don't do that, it has a single quote in there, but we don't want that single quote to suddenly end the string, so we can wrap the whole thing in double quotes. And we'll see an example of that later on in the Jupyter Notebook. Now what's important to note here is that strings are ordered sequences. And that means we can use indexing or slicing to grab subsections of the string because we know each character has a specific position to be in. And indexing notation, it uses that square bracket notation after the string, or the name of the variable assigned to the string. And we're going to see lots of examples of indexing and slicing in just a little bit. So indexing is the term used when you want to grab a single character from the string. So the way this works is that every single character has an index position assigned to it. So you start at zero. That's another important note in Python, that indexing starts at zero. So H has a corresponding number of zero. E has a corresponding number of one, L2, L3, O4. So if I wanted to grab the E, what I would use is inside the square brackets, I would pass in a one after the string, and then it would return back E. And we'll see examples of that later on. What's also interesting about Python is you can actually use reverse indexing. So maybe you wanted to grab the last letter of a string, but you didn't actually know how long the string was. All you knew was you wanted to grab the last letter. Well, luckily there's reverse indexing available to you, so you can go just grab negative one, and it'll grab the last letter of the string regardless of how long that string actually is. Slicing allows you to grab a subsection of multiple characters, otherwise known as a slice of the string. And this has slightly different syntax. Again, it's going to be in square brackets, but because we're grabbing a subsection, we're going to be able to define three parts of this. We're going to be able to say start, stop, and step. So again, this goes in square brackets with a colon separating each of these three terms. Start is going to be the numerical index of the slice start. Stop is going to be the index you will go up to, but not include. So that's an important note there. And we're gonna really focus on that in the examples we'll see in just a bit. And then step is the size of the jump you take from uh, start to stop. Okay, so let's explore all these concepts. They're going to make a lot more sense when we actually see the code examples. Let's hop over to a notebook. Okay, let's quickly show a couple of examples of a string. Again, we can use single quotes, hello, or we can use double quotes. So here I say double quotes of world. You can also have an entire phrase, it doesn't need to just be uh, one word. So we can say this is also a string. So we have a whole phrase there and the white spaces count as characters inside of the string. Now, something we should note here is that we can mix single quotes and double quotes. So if I'm going to say something like, for instance, I'm going on a run. So note what's happening here. Because I'm using single quotes on the outside, only part of this is getting highlighted with the syntax. So this is going to confuse Python because it thinks that you're trying to end the string here, when really I'm trying to end the string here. So if I try to run the cell, it'll say an error here, invalid syntax. What I really wanna do is wrap this in double quotes and that way I won't have an error when I have this single quote in here. So then when I run this, Python has no problem. It says, okay, I get what you're trying to do here, trying to have a single quote there stay, and that's actually not part of the definition of the string. So now let's discuss actually printing out a string. So far, we're actually just asking the string to be returned. And that's the reason we see in and out with these cells. And that's also the reason we actually see the quotes in the output below the cell but we can use the print function to actually print out a string. So we're going to say print, hello. And if we run this, note what we actually get back. We no longer see the out in the cell, and instead we no longer see the quotes themselves. We're actually just printing out the actual string. And the reason this is important is because, let's imagine I wanted to say hello world one, and then I also wanted to say hello world two. If I were to run this, what ends up happening is I only get back that last string. In order to see everything, I actually have to print out the results. So I will say print and wrap this in parentheses, print hello world one, and then I'll say print 
and then say hello world too. And then when I run this, I get to see both strings printed out. So I no longer see that output, I'm actually just printing the results. Now something else I want to mention is that there's actually escape sequences, and escape sequences allow you to kind of have special commands inside of your string. So let's just go ahead and say print hello world. And if I run this, I see hello world printed on one line. But I can actually add an escape sequence. So it's going to be a backslash n. And what this does is it basically tells Python, hey, this n right here, that's no longer the character n. I actually want you to, because of this backslash, treat this as a new line. So if that escape character there, it's going to say print hello space, then a new line, and then space world. So that's what we see here, hello, space, and world. If I want a world to be lined up with hello, I could actually just touch it like this, run that, and then I see hello world. And Python knows not to include this letter n there because it's essentially attached to that backslash. So another popular escape sequence is t for tab. And if I run that, I get back hello tab, so four spaces, world. And we'll be talking a lot more about this when we discuss print formatting coming up next. For now, another built-in function that I want to show you is the len function, or the length function. So this allows you to check the length of a string. So I can say hello, and if I run this, I get back length of five because there's five characters in that string. If there happens to be a space in the string, so I will say I am hungry. Let's make it more obvious. We'll just say I am, and we run this. Here we can see there's four. So we have I space AM, so that counts as a length of four characters in the string. All right, we'll stop it here for now, and in the very next lecture, we'll pick up right where we left off discussing string indexing and string slicing. I'll see you there. Welcome back, everybody. In this lecture, we're going to continue right where we left off last time, but we'll be discussing string indexing and slicing. Indexing, where we grab a single character, and slicing, where we grab a subsection of that string. Let's jump to the Jupyter Notebook and get started. Okay, so to start this all off, I'm going to create a variable called my string, and I'm going to set it equal to the string hello world. So notice there's a space in there between hello world. I run this, and let's check to make sure. Okay, so we have hello world there ready to go. Now, let's imagine I wanted to grab a single character from this string. In that case, I want to use indexing. So what we do is we call the variable name, we have square brackets off of it, and let's imagine I want to grab the first character that is capital H, then I pass in a zero because indexing starts at zero, and that allows me to return that first character H. Let's try to grab another character. Let's say we want to grab R, so let's count this out. My string, and we want to count from zero, so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, so notice the space counts, six, seven, eight. So if I pass an eight there, it should return R. Perfect. So again, this is known as indexing. Now let's imagine we wanted to grab this letter L. Well, there's two ways I could actually do this. I could say my string at nine, because that's right after that R. The other way I could do it is using the reverse indexing we previously mentioned. So starting at zero from H, I can go backwards in the string. So that D is negative one, and that means this L is negative two. So if I say my string negative two, I will actually get back that L. And then if I keep going backwards in the string, I'll get back that R, which is right before the L. So I will get back this R right there. So you can use both positive index positions and negative index positions to grab elements or characters from the string. And that's really useful again, because oftentimes you'll have a variable string, maybe it's someone's name, and you don't know how big that name is, but for whatever reason you want to grab the last letter of their name, then you can always just use negative one, and you know that's the last letter of the string. Okay, let's go ahead and continue to discuss slicing. So slicing is a little more complicated because we're grabbing a subsection of the string. So that's more than one character typically. Let's review our string. Oops, my string here is hello world. And I'm going to redefine my string, just so this is a little easier to follow, as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So just kind of a string of the alphabet there. We'll redefine it. And now I have this string of the alphabet. So let's imagine that we wanted to grab 
a subsection of a string that started at a particular index and then went all the way to the end. Well, the way we could do that is we would say my string, square bracket notation, and then we would say the starting index, let's imagine we want to start at the letter C and then go all the way to the end. So C is at index two because it's zero, one, two. So what I do is I pass in two. And if I just do that, it gives me back the letter C. But if I want from C all the way to the end, I can say colon. And that indicates starting at index two, colon, go all the way to the end. And there we have C, D all the way to K. Okay, now let's imagine uh, kind of an opposite situation where I want to grab everything up to a particular index. Then I could say my string colon and let's say I wanted to grab a, b, and c. So starting at the very beginning go ahead and grab all the way up to essentially letter d here. So we'll say 0, 1, 2, 3, pass in 3 there and then we run this and we get back a, b, c. Now this is sometimes confusing for students because if we check out my string, uh, technically we have the D at index position three because it's zero, one, two, three. What you should note here is that the stop index, this term right here for three, which only returns back A, B, C, that stop index is basically saying go up to, but not including that index position. So go up to the letter D, but don't include it, which essentially says A, B, C. So keep that in mind as you're kind of playing around with slice notation. This stop is up to, but not including. Okay, let's combine these two ideas of a starting index and a stop index by trying to grab a subsection of string that's in the middle. For example, let's try to grab D, E, F from the middle of the string. The way we can do that is we say my string, open square brackets, and then we start off with our starting index position. In this case, it's at letter D. So that's zero, one, two, three. Then we say colon, and then it's going to go up to the index position of G here, because I just want D, E, F. So we're going to go up to, but not including G. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now if I run this, I get back D, E, F. So let's practice this one more time by trying to grab another subsection of the string. For example, let's try to grab just B and C, these two letters, B, C. So the way we can do that is we'll type out my string, open and close square brackets. Our starting index position is at zero, one for B, colon, and then it looks like we want to go up to, but not including D, so that's zero, one, two, three. We'll run this, and there we have B, C. And I would encourage you to try to grab a subsection. So choose the subsection of the string and then see if you can grab it. You can go ahead and pause the video and try that out. Okay, to end our discussion, let's quickly discuss step size. Let's imagine that I wanted to grab everything from the beginning of the string all the way to the end. Well, technically, that's just the string itself, but I could also use colon notation for this. I could say colon colon, and that basically says from all the way to the beginning, go all the way to the end. Now, you don't often see this because you might as well just call the string itself but this is technically valid syntax. The reason you might see something like this is if someone wanted to specify the third parameter, and that is the step size. So right now we're saying go all the way from the beginning to the end in a step size of one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's the default step size of one. However, I can change that by providing a number such as two, and that says go in jumps of two. So from A, go to C, to E, to G, to I, to K. So if I run this, I get back A, C, E, G, I, K, because I'm jumping in a step size of two. And we can increase this to be a step size of three, and then we'll get from A, jump to D, jump to G, jump to J, and then there's no more letters to jump to because we're jumping in a larger step size. So that's how step size works, and you can combine this with a start and stop as well. So we could say something like starting from index two, go up to, but not including index seven and a step size of two, and we get back C, E, G. So C, then jump to E, then jump to G. So notice how this all works in combination. You have a start, a stop, and then a step size. Something that you may commonly see is using a clever step size trick to reverse a string. And what you can do is say my string, and then say from all the way to the beginning, all the way to the end, take a step size of negative one. And what that does is it actually reverses your string because you're saying from all the way to the beginning to all the way to the end, 
go and take a backward step, which is then k, j, i, all the way to the end. So this is kind of a little Python trick. Uh, often in interviews, people ask you to reverse a string, and they kind of get annoyed by Pythonistas because they quickly just do this nice kind of slick one-liner instead of doing a for loop. But I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, typically in our code, we won't really be using this too much because it's more of a trick. But again, a very useful one at that. Okay, so that's it for slicing and indexing. Coming up next, we're going to discuss a little bit about some useful string properties. We'll see you there.